Officers stopped the caravan a few miles from the high school and arrested four 17-year-old boys who officers said were carrying, <gasps> are you ready, marijuana and scales and baggies commonly used to package the drug. Oh, no. They got those 17-year-old potheads on prom night. Justice is served. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. But this is just, you know, the start of it. I Actually, in my uh, film, Invisible Empire, I am going to go through how basically Facebook, MySpace, you're databasing yourself you're, you're for, for the man, I guess, for the authorities, for the establishment. And they admit that the FBI is using MySpace. And here it is. New Jersey police use Facebook to uh, stop kids from smoking the pot on prom night. I'm, I'm really happy about that. That's good. That's good news. Let's see. Uh, earlier in the week, or last week, I'm sorry, I reported that Austria was going to get out of uh, the CERN project, uh, the particle physics lab, where they're going to slam the two particle beams together and see what happens. Uh, they've had a change of heart. Austria has changed its mind and will now uh, not pull out of international particle phys physics laboratory CERN over the cost. Uh, Chancellor Werner Feynman said in a statement on Monday overruling his science minister. So the science minister, I guess, wanted out. Feynman said no dice. Uh, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, has created the biggest machine ever, a particle collider, the Large Hedron Collider, by the way, under the fresh winds border outside of Geneva, which aims to recreate the conditions of, quote-unquote, the Big Bang, or the origin of the universe. Austria has been a member of CERN for over 50 years. The whole host of Austrian scientists are linked to CERN and will continue to do so in the future. So it looks like uh, Austria is still in CERN. Uh, U.S. to propose most aggressive auto fuel standards. Basically, they're saying that uh, cars will have to get uh, between 35 and 42 miles per gallon between 2012 and 2016. I, overall, I think this is actually a good thing. The problem is they're going to start banning and outlawing older cars in certain places because your carbon dioxide emissions too much. Or maybe they'll just tax you more if your car only gets, you know. So on top of paying, you know, ridiculous amounts of money for gas because you only get 12 to 18 miles per gallon, they're going to tax you on top of it for not being clean for the environment. Oh, thank you. Thank you, government. Oh, it's, I'm so glad that I'll be able to, you know, drive with the top down in my new sports car while you tax the hell out of me and overcharge me for gas. Oh, freedom. Let it ring. Let it ring. Uh, I love the smell of napalm on my Xbox, how computer games of the future will simulate the real stench of battle. Now, we've been saying that they're training the kids with the first-person shooters for some time for combat. They've also been doing similar programs uh, in the military. This is declassified. But we have this uh, Daily Mail article I thought I'd read. It is one of the most memorable lines in movie history. As the air around him is, uh, is rent by explosions and the whiz of bullets, Colonel Kilgore stands nonchalantly with hands on his hips, sniffs the acid breeze and declares, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Now actor Robert Duvall's famous scene from the Vietnam epic Apocalypse Now could be reenacted in the millions of teenagers' bedrooms thanks to technology that will allow computer game consoles to release the stench of war. The Ministry of Defense is part funding a project in which foul smells are released into the air during training videos so that recruits literally learn to sniff out trouble. If the technology proves a success, it is expected to be taken up by manufacturers of top-selling consoles such as the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Further getting us into VR, further desensitizing the popu population to violence... Uh, the team of psychologists and computer engineers de developing the technology on behalf of the British Army plan to bombard troops with odors ranging from body sweat to diesel exhaust. The aim is to teach recruits that the presence of some smells and absence of others could indicate danger. They're making it even more realistic on the battlefield. And you know what's going to make it even more realistic when they offer you that good old chip? Oh, yeah, just put that video game chip in. Oh, you are the controller. You watch. I, I, you know what? I'm guessing we're going to see that big announcement. I know I, I went over the Sega story where the uh, creator of Sega started to talk about how they were going to use this technology in the future. I say we're two years away from the announcement of an actual model and people throwing the chip in for the new video game system.
But don't worry, there'll be like some kind of an alternative where you can wear it in a glove or maybe an armband. Who knows? The Wall Street Journal actually covered the Bilderberg Group over the weekend in their world section. Uh, the elite gather in Greece for a not-so-secret meeting. See, now it's not so secret. It's a, remember, it's a golf club. They don't set policy. It doesn't matter if their documents have now been leaked and they're the ones that created the European Union and the Euro. It's not a secret meeting. They're good. They're, they're above-board organizations, above-the-table organizations, according to the great Zygnu Brzezinski. The Astor Palace Hotel in this Greek coastal town wasn't open for Coffee Friday. The luxury resort, 25 miles south of Athens and the Aegean Sea, normally welcomes guests to use its bars and restaurants or its private beach. But when a reporter tried to go in for a coffee, a suited security guard barred, barred the way. The hotel is closed for a meeting, a very big meeting, he said. Greek media apparently tipped off were a buzz over the reasons behind the heightened security at the hotel. A gathering of the Bilderberg Group, a secretive annual rendezvous of top politicians and business leaders. At the Club of the Strong, said the headline in Greek uh, daily Ephros Typos, Bilderberg, the first violins of capitalism. Founded half a century ago, the group has no widely known headquarters, no accord is announced at the end of its meetings, and no one is supposed to divulge their presence. Still, uh, many do let it be known subly, and past attendees are said to have included Henry Kissinger and Margaret Thatcher. No, Kissinger goes every year. Uh, Rockefeller goes every year. Not past members. Those guys are the hardcore still members. This time, one confirmed guest is Greek Prime Minister Kostas Karamanios. As you know, there is a lot of dignitaries in Athens, and this is the courtesy on behalf of the Prime Minister, said his communications advisor. Others scheduled to attend, according to those in the know, include European Central Bank uh, President Jacques-Claude Chichet and World Bank President Robert Zolik, U.S. Department uh, Secretary of State James Steinberg is expected to attend, as well as Domenico, uh, what is this, Siniscavico, Vice Chairman of Morgan Stanley. So all the bankers, the, the usual suspects. But it's not that secret, and it's no big deal that they're meeting. Thank you, Wall Street Journal. Well, at least you're actually admitting they exist. It's a real group. No, really, the Bilderberg Group, they're real. It's unbelievable. We're going to get into more stuff, including a Tampa woman starping an armed carjacker with her own gun. Love those stories of people standing up for their rights. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis, 866-582-9933.